There are two reasons to be attracted to the Nikon D5600. It's price and the Nikon reputation. For novice photographers and for those expanding their horizons from shooting with a smartphone or a point and prey camera, it's a perfect choice. It is a DSLR. It's a camera with a mirror. And that makes it somewhat larger, heavier, and noisier than mirror-less cameras. And because the mirror has to flip out of the way to preview the image on the screen or to shoot video, it may not suit your style. But if you want to shoot with your eye in the viewfinder and see the image optically exactly the way the lens does, that's the D5600's advantage. It's a classic camera in the nicest possible way. No overinflated feature set, no complex menu to navigate. It's not basic, but it is very straightforward. And that doesn't mean it doesn't have some of the latest features. The screen tilts up and down. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to connect and send images to a smartphone or a tablet. The images live up to Nikon's reputation. And with a very reliable auto exposure and auto focus system, this camera allows me to concentrate on composition. The 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor delivers under ideal and challenging conditions meeting and exceeding my expectations. The body is solid, with a nicely contoured grip, so my fingers land in the right place on the controls. Except for the menu button on the left, the remainder of the controls are clustered on the right. A single card slot on the right side with a mini HDMI port above. On the left side, USB, a mic input, an accessory port for remote controls. I asked for the 16 to 80 millimeter lens for this review. I would honestly advise against the 18 to 55 kit lens. Image sizes go up to 24 megapixels. You can select a smaller size, but why? File quality options include three flavors of JPEG, the standard photo file type, on their own or combined with RAW, the direct recording of data from the sensor. And those RAW recordings go up to 14-bit, and that's a good thing if you intend to work on these images in Lightroom or Photoshop. Using the Green P Auto Mode makes the D5600 nearly foolproof. The camera looks after all the details including flash, use the adjacent No Flash setting to suppress its desire to pop up. There's also a flash release button for backlit scenes when you want to fill. The flash is rated with the guide number 12 up to 12 meters. The D5600 screen is touch enabled. Touch the screen to make adjustments or menu selections. In general, a boxed outline means a setting can be touched and adjusted. And in live view, touch to focus or tap the screen button to switch to focus and snap. Using auto mode does limit your options. Many of the eye menu options are not available. And if your creativity demands more than auto offers, the MASP control modes offer greater flexibility. Most of my images were taken in P or A modes in combination with auto ISO. The D5600 is easy to master with a minimal and rational control set. There's only one dial to change settings. It seems smallish and overly recessed, but I had no issues using it. In viewfinder mode, you'll see this display on the LCD screen, left to right, the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. In the viewfinder, and note that for me, the diopter doesn't adjust enough to suit my prescription, the same exposure settings are displayed in a rather cryptic 80s style across the bottom. In program mode, turn the dial for flexible program options, P star mode, alternate settings that still achieve an appropriate exposure. With auto ISO, you'll see the ISO the camera has selected. In aperture and shutter priority modes, the dial changes the priority setting, adjusting either the f-stop or the shutter speed. Here in A, I'm changing the aperture, shutter and ISO are adjusted automatically by the camera. Of course, auto modes are only as accurate as the meter. The D5600 has three meter options. Press the I button and select the meter from the menu. Then select Matrix, Center Weighted, or Spot to expose properly for your subject. In P, A, and S modes, 
Press the EV adjustment button, just swing your finger back from the shutter, while turning to make the image lighter or darker. You won't see the effect unless you're in live view mode. Most controls work the same, whether you're using the viewfinder or have switched to LV, live view mode. In live view, the camera flips the mirror out of the way, so it's kind of a mirror less mode. It's easier for me to show you using live view, so that's what you see in this video. In general, I prefer to shoot with the viewfinder, and let me show you why. First, here's what happens in viewfinder mode. Now, here's what happens in live view. With more clicking and a longer time between shots, here are those EV adjustments in live view. In the M, manual mode, a linear meter appears bottom right, and even though the image would be overexposed, the live view display looks properly exposed. Now the rear dial controls the shutter speed. Press the same button used for EV to adjust the aperture. To set the ISO, press the fun button on the left side of the lens. I do find all that slightly awkward, always nicer to have dedicated dials. One peculiarity, there are some Nikon lenses, including the 18-55 to kit, that don't allow the aperture to be changed in live view. Here's how auto ISO works. On the menu, turn it on or off and set the maximum. There's also a minimum shutter speed setting, but beware, once the maximum ISO is reached, the shutter speed is in play again. Here, for example, in aperture priority mode with the lens cap on, the ISO is at 6400, the aperture is wide open, and the shutter speed is about a second. In addition to auto white balance and a selection of presets, each of which can be fine-tuned by pressing right, you can capture a custom white balance live using the measure option or from a photo. Measure is not available in live view. Although I was able to capture a setting successfully using measure, it's done when you see data acquired, I was not able to get the from photo to work. There's no degrees Kelvin setting. White balance can also be set from the eye menu, but there's no opportunity to fine tune or capture a custom setting. Use the menu. You can also set the picture control or color profile from the eye menu, but again, you'll find more functionality in the main menu. Each has six controls to make custom adjustments. And for both of these, wouldn't it be nice to have the control integrated with the interactive display to see what you're doing? The flat setting is designed for video that will be color graded in post. I prefer to create the look in camera with neutral and a reduction in sharpening and saturation. The easiest way to focus, in live view anyway, is to touch and snap. Love that. There are three focus modes in live view, single, continuous, full-time servo is how Nikon refers to it, and manual, and four areas, face detect, normal area, where the spot is this size, and wide, with a larger spot. The spot can be moved using the control wheel or just touch. It can't be dragged. Although not speedy, it can focus to the very edges of the screen. And occasionally, even with a confirmation beep, it fails to focus. Combined with full-time servo, tracking is effective at following. However, sometimes less than effective at focusing. Manual focus, and remember, there's also a focus switch on many Nikon lenses, as well as a very useful distance window, can be assisted using the magnify and demagnify buttons for an expanded view of your subject. The expanded view is moved using the cursor control, and then turn the lens ring to focus. Switching back to viewfinder, you'll find a different focus system, four modes, Auto Servo, which switches from single to continuous when it detects movement, as well as single, continuous, and manual. The area selection differs depending on mode. For single, there's single point, which can be moved using the control dial to 39 points in the center of the screen, and auto area, using the same 39 points. The focus map, on the bottom left of the LCD screen, can also be used to position the focus point. 
Continuous and Auto Servo have six options, single, which can be positioned, and then 9, 21, and 39 dynamic points. Nikon recommends 9 for predictable movement, 21 for unpredictable movement, and 39 for fast movement. Takes a little trial and error to determine which is best for any situation. There's a tracking mode, which although limited to the center of the screen, does seem to track more quickly than the equivalent live view mode. And auto area. The drive mode button is hidden low on the left side of the lens mount. Options include continuous low and high burst. I recommend shooting burst with the viewfinder. Buffer size displays on the bottom right. Shooting in high with 24 megapixel fine JPEGs to a U3 rated card, I clocked 5 images per second for 20 seconds until it reached its maximum, 100 images, and stopped. That's a good result with a very reasonable buffer, but other cameras are exceeding those numbers. Other drive options are quiet, and even calling it slightly less loud is an exaggeration, and self-timer. The custom settings menu adjusts the time from 2 to 20 seconds, the number of images taken from 1 to 9. Those numbers exceed what you'll find elsewhere. The D5600 can record video only in live view mode, which means the viewfinder is not available while recording video. I find that awkward, both because the camera is steadier when I'm using the viewfinder, but also because on a sunny day it's hard to see the LCD. And while video can be recorded in any mode, just press the red button, I recommend either S or M so that you can set the shutter speed to 1 60th. Press the red button and the screen transforms to the 16 by 9 aspect ratio, remaining time displays top left. I recommend you press the info button until the video specific display appears. Now you can see the video settings, the maximum clip length and audio meters also provides a video-specific version of the eye menu. Movie settings are on a submenu. For frame size and rate full HD 1080 supports NTSC and PAL frame rates from 24 to 60, 720 only 50 and 60. At 1080 60 high quality recordings are limited to 10 minutes at other frame rates high quality is limited to 20 minutes normal quality 30 minutes. There's no warning when it stops recording but you can just press record to continue recording. The data rate at high quality HD 60 is about 35 megabits, high quality HD 30, 21, and normal HD 30 about 12 megabits. Video clips are saved as single .mov files. A 20 minute HD 30 recording is slightly over three gigs. Auto ISO works while recording video, unless you turn on manual movie mode. Touch does enable a rack focus, and maybe there are better lenses, but the transition with the 16 to 80 is an interesting effect, but not exactly a smooth transition. Mic in connector makes this a good choice for video recording. Use the I menu to adjust or mute audio recording levels. The I menu can also be used to select picture control, useful if you'd like to shoot black and white, or spin the dial to the effects position. These effects can all be used for video recording. Although I tend to dismiss these as gimmicky, some could be very useful. I found that the low key setting produced an effect very similar to that required in day for night shooting. And a few have interesting side effects. For example, the miniature effect speeds up the action but does not record audio. And photo illustration has a stilted motion effect, capturing only a few distinct frames per second. The D5600 seems less susceptible to rolling shutter effects. I had to be quite severe in my actions before I could detect it. I enjoy the ability to create a time lapse, set the interval, the duration, and the length of the finished movie as displayed. Exposure smoothing prevents auto exposure from changing dramatically. The frame rate of the finished video is based on the current movie settings. I set 30. There's no image on the LCD when an external monitor is connected. HDMI output resolution can be set up to 1080p. There's no explicit clean output menu selection, but there is a clean display option available using the info button. 
with a screen that flips out and a mic input, the D5600 makes a pretty good vlogging camera. To manage exposure, I'm in shutter priority. For focus, I've got autofocus continuous with face detect on, and I can see that the lens is wobbling just slightly, which probably means face detect is kind of going on and off. For stability, I'm using the VR in active mode, and I think the whole combination works reasonably well. There are a few things that you don't get with the 5600. There's no level, a feature that seems to be fairly standard on camera these days. And there's no histogram, except in the playback mode. And finally, there's no panorama, although that's a feature that you could always do manually. Image review controls whether the picture is displayed on the LCD after it's taken. Playback display options provide on-screen data while reviewing your photos. One feature I appreciate, the actual file name, so I can make notes. The I menu provides the ability to rate and retouch photos. Raw processing includes size and quality options, as well as white balance and picture controls. Never too late to add Vivid. EXE saves the image as a new file. Zoom in and press I to crop the image. There are no options to trim or extract stills from a video. Nikon has been working hard on SnapBridge, their free smart device app. I'm sure it will soon be great, but for the moment a few rough edges remain, particularly when it comes to getting it configured. Once that's done, it transfers photos automatically, a very useful feature if you regularly post to Instagram or other social media. It's a pleasant experience to sit down and find your latest photos on your phone or tablet ready for posting. One nice feature, the ability to add credits, including settings data, comment, and a logo. The connection is configured and maintained using Bluetooth, but I found the Wi-Fi handover to be problematic. Improving, though, from the last time I used it. Battery life is good if you're shooting with the viewfinder. Not so much with live view or when shooting video. A charger is included. The 5600 can't be charged or powered with USB. Nikon has fine-tuned the auto modes on this camera to provide beautiful results. Whether I'm using green pea, flash suppression, or program. It's a pleasure to review my images. And when my creativity demands full manual, it has a full suite of controls. Although slightly old school, the D5600 is a solid choice for a photographer who values quality and simplicity. I kind of suspect this camera is one that won't feel dated for quite a while.